Good morning, River Church. I am James, one of the team members here at the River. And this is a totally weird Sunday. As a matter of fact, it is a weird world we're living in right now. At the River Church, we are a hopelessly relational place. So this is definitely putting a strain on our instincts. But we recognize something that I think churches across the world are recognizing is you can't cancel church because church isn't an event. It's not a building. It's not even a configuration of people, it's a community. And so as we are meeting through virtual meetings, as we are praying for one another, texting one another, yelling over the fence at one another, whatever ways we deploy to kind of stay connected, we decided as a church, after much discussion, let's do, let's do a video and let's, let's launch it on Sunday morning. So as an entire community, wherever you are, there will be a sense that we're doing this together, we're watching this together. So if you're sitting there right now, hopefully you're in your jam jams, hopefully you're eating some, I don't know, Captain Crunch perhaps, maybe a protein shake for those of you on the healthier sides. Some of you had a long week of hoarding toilet paper. We'd ask you to stop that behavior. But wherever you are, whatever you're doing, this is a morning where we are going to do what we always do. We start off by recognizing that it is the God of the universe that we are refocusing on. So let me pray to just kind of launch into our service this morning. Lord, we thank you that in the midst of the chaos that no one saw coming months and months ago, even a week ago, most of us didn't see this coming, Lord, that nothing takes you by surprise. You are as sovereign today as you were last week, as you were a millennia ago. And so we just right now take all of the anxiety, all of the uncertainty, all of the destabilization, and we, we offer it up to you. Thank you so much for this chance to still connect. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And, and even as our world is in so much chaos and our lives have been reoriented and reconfigured dramatically, as a church family, we are in a deep place, uh, specifically and uniquely of grief. We are mourning the loss of Cynthia McPhee, one of the most beautiful human beings you'll ever have a chance to spend time with, to see, to hug, to listen to. And our hearts just break for that loss. And Bill McPhee, one of my mentors, one of the most godly men I have ever met, one of the greatest leaders I've ever met, his heart is broken right now. And so as an entire community, I know we've all been pouring out prayers for him. I, I saw this Psalm, Psalm 34, verse 18. It says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Bill McPhee is one of the most righteous people I've ever met, one of the most amazing hearts. And I know the Lord is with him in this pain, but we can't wrap our minds around it. It's so great. And so as a, as a church family, let's just take a second, let's take a minute and, and, and all together pray. So I'm just gonna go quiet for a second and pray, and then I will, I will close this out. Lord, we thank you so much for the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful life of Cynthia. And God, we mourn the loss of our sweet sister. And we ask you for encouragement for Bill right now and his family, Heather and Connor, that you would wrap your feathers around them, Lord, give them shelter and comfort. I thank you, Lord God, that you know suffering, you understand it, you are not, you are not disconnected from our pain. And so Lord, we, we just together as a community wrap our, our hearts around Bill and we ask you, Jesus, to bring comfort and peace and a sense of your abiding presence even in this pain. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So we're not gonna stop praying for Bill and we are standing with him and his family through this loss. And this morning, as we move into something totally different for the River Church, I'm excited to bring up one of my favorite people, someone who has invested so richly in my kiddos, in my family, and also someone that basically takes anything and makes it a heck of a lot more fun. And so 
Kathy Plummer, she's six feet away from me, so I'm gonna move six feet and she'll move into this shot. But Kathy, would you come on in here and uh, let's continue this service. Well, I wanna give a shout out to the River Kids. Hey guys, I hope you're all in your jammies and you're sitting next to your parents with your pancakes and watching this awesome service. So I know that um, you guys are all bummed that you can't be together. And so we wanted to do like a little vignette every um, Sunday, just to kind of like take a peek into how each of you are doing this homestay is what I'm starting to call it. Cause I want to keep away from all the buzzwords. So today um, I have Josh Turnbow here. He's going to represent the Turnbow family. And um, the Turnbows have been totally involved with the River Kids. Josh and Kira have their three awesome little tykes that I get to see every weekend. So I just wanted to ask Josh what God's been doing in this time for their family as they've been kind of hanging out at home. Thanks, Kathy. Hey, River Church, it's Josh Turnbow. Um, I just want to take a minute and just share a thought with you. I know um, it's, it's a really crazy time and um, there's a lot of tragedy around us. It's, it's sad and we need to be just seeking God and, and praying about that. But also in this time, uh, there's this really unique blessings. And for me, one is that I've never really had an opportunity to kind of in a carefree way stay home with my family. Um, there's always stresses and always a lot of thoughts on my mind and I'm sure our minds, but this is a really weird, unique shut-in with the family. I've spent more time with my sons and my daughter than I've really done in years. And um, it's interesting because I can kind of put that on the schedule now. And I, I couldn't really do that before. So in a, in a strange way, this experience is really bringing me closer with my family. And my wife, of course, uh, gets a lot more time with me and, and I drive her crazy. But um, it's awesome to be together. And I didn't expect that in this, this kind of crazy event that's happening. So God's even blessing us in this time of conflict or trouble in the world. And I think we uh, would be wise to just take that time if we have it. And I know I am, and I hope you can too. And uh, I just hope that on this Sunday, you're able to get with the family and really remember what's important and the blessing of family. And, uh, and I hope you don't run out of toilet paper. Josh, thanks. We love um, getting that little peek into the Turnbow family and how you're taking more time with your kids and your wife. Um, now let's just kind of lean in and have a time of worship with Jasmine. Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for a new day, God, where we get to trust you, where we get to be loved by you. Lord, would you drown all of our fear in your love, in your perfect love for us today. We praise your name this morning, God.
walking in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you Yes, you are here Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Stop.
I'm Todd Windorf, a pastor at the River Church. I'm glad you're with us. I miss you. I wish we could be together. Uh, but I want to bring God's word to you this morning. But before I do that, I want to, I just want to extend our love and our support to Bill McPhee, one of our pastors. We love you, Bill. Our whole church loves you. Um, you've been a mentor and a friend to me. Um, a partner in ministry and you've been a beloved pastor of the river and uh, we're we're standing with you and praying for you in this time of just absolute uh, loss you've lost your your love of your life um, the beautiful Cynthia McPhee and um, we are um, all with you and praying and standing with you and I just wanted you to know as a church we love you we know that uh, there's many of you out there uh, that uh, need the encouragement of God's Word. And we want to bring that encouragement to you. We're going to be looking through uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel lived in a very turbulent time, an uncertain time. And yet he found his foundation in the Lord. We know we need Daniel's God in a time like this. Daniel says in Daniel chapter 2 verse Verse 20, it says, let the name of God be blessed forever, for wisdom and power belong to him. You and I need that in a time of uncertainty. It's right now our foundation is being shaken. God may be doing several things in your life. Um, maybe the uncluttering your life, maybe the useless things in your life are being set aside and you're focusing now on the God that remains forever. And this is an opportunity for you to trust the Lord and what he's doing in your life. It's also a window of opportunity. And I want to encourage you as a follower of Christ. This is a window of opportunity. The clouds have been pushed away. The sun is breaking through. And it's a reminder to people that God is still in control and he's sovereign. You play a part in that. So as we jump into Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, we looked at that last week and we've recorded that if you're interested in going back and listening. But we, we discover first of all that Daniel draws a line in the sand and he decides that he is going to honor God's way no matter what. It's, it's the foundation of your faith. It's the foundation of how to make it through uncertain times is following God's ways. That's chapter 1. Well, in chapter 2, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel finds himself in a foreign land and the king has a troubling dream. It says it right in chapter 2, verse, verse 1. His spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. The whole land was in confusion. Sounds like the, the moment we're living in right now. Uh, there's a lot of troubling dreams, um, broken dreams, Dreams that have been decimated by what we're experiencing by this virus that is literally spreading across the globe. I mean, school has been canceled. Graduation is questioned whether it's going to happen or not. Um, travel has been postponed. Um, we question whether, <laughs> whether, whether our retirement's going to be there for us. Um, people are losing their jobs over this. Uh, weddings have been postponed. I mean, we're hearing every day about broken and crushed and troubling dreams. And what we learn in Daniel chapter 2 is Daniel steps in and gives the interpretation of this, these crushed dreams. See, crushed dreams bring new perspective. They bring new perspective for us and they, new, they bring new perspective for other people. And so we, we discover in this passage that, that the king goes to his trusted advisors and nobody can interpret the dream. All the magicians and all, all the, in, the, 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 the conjurers of magic and all the other people that the king had around him could not interpret the dream. And yet Daniel's stance steps up. Daniel takes the step of faith and says, give me time, let me interpret the dream. And he asks from compassion, from the Lord of heaven concerning the mystery. And it says the mystery was revealed to Daniel and Daniel stops and prays God because Daniel gets the interpretation of the dream. 
the interpretation of the dream comes to Daniel through God. And so he stops and pauses and says, let the name of God be blessed. It says that right there in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. For he is the one that changes the times and the epics. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. It is he who reveals the profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. And so he takes the interpretation of the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. And it's a dream of a statue. And the statue has many components to it. And it's made of different components of gold and silver and bronze and clay and iron. And the, and, and the statue represents the kingdoms that will come and the kingdoms that will go. And one after another. And at the end of this dream, it says that there will be a stone that struck the statue and became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That's God's kingdom. So Daniel takes this interpretation and says, here's all the kingdoms that will come and go, King Nebuchadnezzar, but one kingdom will remain forever. It's the rock that's hewed out of the mountain. It's God's kingdom. This is what we know. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. It will endure forever, Daniel tells King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar falls to his face and pays homage, it says, to Daniel and to Daniel's God. See, you and I have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to interpret the dreams of this generation, the broken, crushed, decimated dreams of this generation. People need the interpretation, and you and I have it. It's, it's, it's the stone. It's the, it's the stone which represents the kingdom of God. I was standing six feet apart from a friend of mine, Mike Keating, the other day, and, and uh, he said, have you read Psalm 18 lately? I said, no, and he said, take a look at it. It might relate. Psalm 18 says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge. Later in Psalm 18, it says, the cords of death encompass me. The cords of Sheol surround me. In my distress, I call upon the Lord. The Lord is the rock. The Lord is the stone that is hewed out of the mountain that will fill the whole earth. It's, it's a picture of the kingdom of God that is being established. And you and I have an opportunity to bring that new perspective to people right now that are suffering, that might be fearful, might not know what is gonna happen next, and yet we know, we know, we know the answer. The rock is God. And we can stand on that. That's our foundation. People need that new perspective. Don't shrink back. Stand on it and interpret people's dreams by giving them a new perspective of who God is. I was watching CNN. I haven't been watching a lot of news, but I, I watched CNN and there was a piece where uh, the interviewer was asking this expert some questions. And at the end of the interview, they, they, you could see that they made eye contact and, and one said, God bless you. And the other one said, God bless you. I mean, in the midst of this interview on CNN, there was, there was a moment where there, there seemed like the people were turning to something greater, something more firm, something more permanent. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe we are seeing people turning finally through crushed dreams to the rock, which is God, the foundation of our faith and the foundation of this world the kingdom of God. Bring that good news. Encourage your neighbors. Encourage friends. That's what Daniel chapter 2 reminds us to do. You and I stand on that. And you and I have an opportunity to bring that to other people. Let me pray for you. So Father, as we um, stand firm on the rock, which is the kingdom of God, which endures forever, no matter what happens. Kingdoms will come, kingdoms will go. Dreams will be crushed, but yet you remain forever. And those that turn to you will be found on standing on solid foundation. And so we pray that we would bring that encouragement to other people in a very uncertain time. In Jesus' name, amen. For we trust in our God And through his 
foundation. We will stand, stand firm on you, God. We will not be shaken. No matter what happens in the world, no matter what is going on, Lord, you are good and you are present with us. And we can lean on you. We could stand on you. We could trust in you. We love you, Jesus. We pray this all in your name. Rolling.
Ling and Mark. Thank you so much, church, for joining us on YouTube. Remember, we will be here at 9 on Sunday morning, so make sure to continue tuning in. Make sure to be checking our Facebook, our YouTube, and please subscribe to our channel, which is clicking that red button that says subscribe. And if you want to go a step further, you could click on the little bell in one of the corners. So please subscribe, turn on your notifications, and we'll see you so soon. We love you, church.